They have a saying in many parts of the United States, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. Relieved as we were to see the back of the rain, we knew with every tick of the clock that the skies above Kentucky could conceivably eclipse <coughs> the very thing we had come to the bluegrass state to see, the eclipse. Nonetheless, knowing that it would be the first total solar eclipse in the continental US since before the film Xanadu, we were not going anywhere. I don't mean that literally, of course, we were in fact going for a drink. I like your hair. Yeah. It, oh, it looks alright. It was windswept when I got out of the car and it made me look like a scarecrow. Alright, here we are. Distillery time. This is the Casey Jones Distillery in Hopkinsville. It is named not for the hockey mast vigilante from the Turtles, uh, nor the heroic 19th century railroader of the same name, but for a local Prohibition era distiller named Alfred Casey Jones. We took this opportunity to do a tasting, which was definitely not an excuse to get completely smashed. Thoughts? That's really nice. Cool. You're welcome. Have a great day. What are these ones? Could I try the moonshine? Well, they're all moonshine. Oh, they're all moonshine. This is just aged in a barrel. I think this one. Yeah, my instinct says the brown. This is 101 proof. This is 96.6. Okay, we'll go with that one. Oh, who am I kidding? I got absolutely portilloed. But it was bloody worth it, if only to feel more at home in Kentucky, a state famous for its whiskey, not to mention the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. And speaking of trails, our next stop took us toward the heart of Hopkinsville to the Trail of Tears Commemorative Park. Things were about to get serious and emotional. The Trail of Tears was dubbed so because it represented the forced removal of natives from lands east of the Mississippi River. Uh, following President Jackson's Indian removal policy, thousands of natives became sick and died en route, a fate that befell Chief Whitepath and Fly Smith, two native leaders who were buried on this very site. By now, approximately 250,000 miles away, the moon was preparing to carry out one of the biggest photo bombs in US history as it finally made its way toward the crosshairs of an unsuspecting sun. It's getting dimmer here as we speak. It's a very strange sensation. The music stopped mercifully, not quite again. I think they're going to make an announcement.
As it came and went, the eclipse served as a magnificent reminder that the celestial objects of our solar system are in charge of this show. It was also a reminder that Homo sapiens, despite our many differences, can unite together in wonder. Traffic jams notwithstanding. Can you believe we got this hotel room for free? No, I'm still a bit in shock about that. It's mental. Just for the kind act of breaking our car. So... 400 miles from home and with dwindling funds, our van broke down at the Trail of Tears commemorative park. Now you know what they say about Indian burial grounds. Thankfully though, the good people at the park's visitor centre did some phoning around and through one of their contacts was able to get us a hotel room free of charge at the Comfort Suites Hotel in Hopkinsville. This is what is known as Southern Hospitality, and a bizarre way to finish our time in Hopkinsville. As ever, this episode of Finding America was made possible by our wonderful patrons at patreon.com slash lostinthepond. Uh, your support throughout the last year has enabled us to get to many of the places in and around Illinois. Now the goal is to get to some of those states that are even further afield, so we really do need all the help we can get. So if you would like to support Lost in the Pond and indeed the Finding America series, like I said, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Every penny helps. Until next time. All the very best from the United States of America. I don't know why I'm doing that stupid voice. I'll stop now. Just...